Hey, Mom. Yeah? Dad. Uh, Seth, he's in the bathroom. My dad's in the bathroom. <laughs> You're just going to be my audience. Lost. It just feels weird signing yeah. it alone. <laughs> like, Woo! Was Chris in New Zealand? Mm -hmm. Chris and Wheezy. Oh, I thought they were both in Australia. Chris was in New Zealand and Australia. Wheezy was just in New Zealand. Why well, can't you just be our audience? Do you need both of us? I like that here. <laughs> <laughs> Those little kids out here sledding. The good old days. <sighs> I'm never going to sign this contract. Holy It's not on there, is it? It's, it's recording. Why? This is funny. <laughs> a lot of hoopla for, <laughs> for not much. You always get like a lot of butterflies before you sign any new yeah. contract. There he is. So, What's an audience? Oh, for the signing? Yeah. Do you know why I called you here today? Are we in trouble? Yeah. Why? I, I guess I'm just going to sign. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Guess I'm not unemployed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have a job. Now, let's get into the details. First, for those of you who are 100% aware of my situation, some background. I've played the last two years in the USL, which competes in the second level of US professional soccer. Last year I played for St. Louis FC for the 2017 season, and we had a rough season. The team didn't meet expectations, I didn't meet my own personal expectations, and then to make things worse, about just after halfway through the season, I suffered the worst injury of my playing career so far. After week after week of misdiagnosis and jumping around from different physicians and doctors, getting opinions, it was finally determined that I was gonna need surgery. And the surgery was an abdominal wall reconstruction. And the surgery meant that I was gonna miss the rest of the 2017 season. But with proper rehabilitation, I was gonna be able to be back for the 2018 season. So. I was gonna miss a little bit of this, but I was confident that I could come back and find a good team for next year. <laughs> Meanwhile, during this time, the NASL has been facing a lot of trouble. They've just been having poor attendance, teams have been kind of switching over to the USL, and so players and teams have been flocking over to the USL. And now this is great for the USL as a league, but it means that there's a lot less jobs in the US. And that also means there's a lot more competition for jobs. And so it's been a very, very tough preseason. All of a sudden these MLS draftees and these people with amazing experience and pretty sound professional careers are scrambling to find a team and a job for the next year. And it's been crazy. I know a lot of people who don't have a job and they're kind of worried about if they have to retire, or what's next. But luckily my agent was able to get some trials for this 2018 season. He didn't get a contract for me, but he said, I got some teams that are interested in you and we're really starting to move forward. So I just got off the phone with my agent and uh, it's, I got very exciting news. I guess there's a team that's interested in me in the USL. I was starting to make that decision. It was about a one week until preseason started and I was getting all ready to actually decide where I was gonna go. But as I was ramping up my rehab to get ready for this, I kept on having this really bad pain in my groin. I'm sore from that training session. My groin is sore from that and I was kicking around at a futsal court. And it was this sharp twinge that would occur whenever I was sprinting full speed or using my left foot for anything harder than a five to 10 yard pass. I was almost in that state of emergency trying everything as fast as I could to get healthy. I was doing acupuncture, PRP injections, steroid injections. I was trying all this different types of rehab, calling my doctor, I got an MRI. And unfortunately, one week before the preseason started and I was actually just getting ready to make a decision on where I was gonna go, uh, my doctor called me and said, look, this groin is only gonna get worse. The only way for this pain to go away is to do surgery. I had a dinner with my parents and kind of broke down. And I was devastated. I mean, it was so hard to hear that news so close because I knew that in this business, teams don't wait for you. It's, it's cruel, but it has to be cruel. There's just so much on the line. If you're not ready when you need to be ready, they're gonna forget about you, go down the list, get to the next player, and then he's gonna be their player. It's nothing personal, it's just business. So I broke the news to my agents and they said they would tell the teams, but then they kind of let me know the harsh reality that, look, it's gonna be hard. Uh, they're, they're saying there's no way these teams are gonna have a spot for you when you come back. And that's just how professional soccer works. There's just so many great players in these leagues that are fighting for a very limited amount of spots. So I went along with the surgery. I flew to St. Louis and I got that. It was an adductor release. It's a very simple and straightforward surgery. Um, and as I was going through it, I was kind of in contact with my agents to see what's going on. 
and they just were not giving me good news about what's going on in the league. They're like, teams are full. There's, you know, we can, I'll, I'll keep an eye out for you. We'll look out for a right back spot, but teams are filling up. It's preseason, and then you get ready to go for this season. So I said, you know, okay, you know, I'll just keep going. And I kind of realized that I had two options. The first option I had was to wait here and just to wait at my house in Portland or go down to San Diego, train on my own, and just wait for an opportunity to come up and just pray that something happened this season so I could get a contract and work my way back into the USL. But then option two, option two is I could be very proactive about this and look elsewhere, look abroad and see where I can go. And to be honest, it wasn't really a hard decision for me because I know that if you take that year off and you don't play for a team in a full year, you become unmarketable for scouts and agents. Nobody wants to represent you. That's actually the same exact reason why I dropped out of college instead of stayed there for an additional year to finish my degree. Because as soon as I was finished playing soccer my senior year, I knew that this opportunity, this window of opportunity for coaches that are interested in a college player is so slim that you have to jump on that. Because if you wait for a full year, they're gonna ask you, where'd you play last year? And then you say, I was training on my own and automatically they go, I don't know. It's just how it works. That's how the game works. So I decided to start looking outside the US and I needed teams to really fall under these three criteria. Number one is that I needed them to have looser visa restrictions for Americans because I've been over to Germany, I've been over to England. I've had tons of teammates who have done the same exact thing and gone on to these countries like Spain and Italy and England, but they don't have that European passport. And the only way they can get a visa to really stay there and work there to play for a team is to have that first division or national team experience and to really be recruited by these top teams. I needed a country that would allow American to come in and have these looser visa restrictions for somebody who's not playing at the top level of professional soccer. Number two is I needed an environment where I would play. I haven't played in a game in six months. I know I needed to get anywhere where I can just play into games and get back in form, back in shape, and get these bigger teams looking at me again. Because I don't want to fall behind and drown out with all the other players who fizzle out of this game because they just stopped playing. And number three is that I needed to get paid enough money where I could just survive. That's all I cared about. Just pay me enough where I can survive, live, and play this game. That's when a distant friend mentioned my name to Waterside Karori down in New Zealand. After talking to the coach down there, the manager, other people who have played in New Zealand, after talking to my family, my girlfriend, and my agents, I decided that this was gonna be the best decision for me. Just to extinguish some comments right now that I know that are gonna pop up and some ideas that are gonna pop up, success is not this constant diagonal upwards. And you know, if you think that every single year it's gonna get better and better and better, you're gonna score progressively more and more goals or have better and better seasons, you're gonna be in for a very rude awakening when it doesn't start to do that. And so many players, as soon as they get that first setback, they quit. And really becoming a pro and becoming successful is about just riding out those setbacks and just continuing to push up while everybody else is quitting. And the other thing is that no matter where you go in the world, there's gonna be competitive soccer or football played. Whether you go to England, whether you go to the sixth division in Germany, whether you play in the US or up in Iceland or down in New Zealand, wherever there's money that's being paid to players to play soccer, there's gonna be good soccer played there. Anybody that dismisses these opportunities as something not worthwhile, hasn't really traveled abroad and played in other countries and seen the level and seen how that there's good soccer played everywhere in the world. So anyway, after all this discussion and kind of deciding that this was the best decision for me, Karori offered me a contract. I told my agent about it and just asked again, like, okay, this is what I'm getting over here in New Zealand. Do you think it's smart for me to go over here and do this? Or do you think I really should wait and try to find an opportunity to pop up in the USL. He reassured to me that, look, there's nothing that I can find right now for you here in the USL. So we either wait here and have a chance, but he is like, I think you go down to New Zealand, get back in form, play, get this contract on your belt, have a great experience, and then we'll go from there. I'll get eyes on you and we'll see what happens. And that brings us to today. So I signed a contract. I am ecstatic about heading down to New Zealand. The more I talk to the manager of the club, the more I talk to the coach, the more I learn about this opportunity down there, I just cannot wait to get down there and start playing and training and developing and just experience something so new and so outside my comfort zone. I'm confident it's gonna be a very fun season. I'm confident that I'm gonna meet great people. I'm confident that this is gonna be a great decision for me. And most importantly, I can't wait to continue to get paid to do what I absolutely love to do, and that's play soccer. But I'm so happy to announce that I've signed a contract to play for Waterside Crew. Let's do it.